In honor of Kansas Day this year on January 29th, I've put together this video to show how to play Decisions Games 2019 uh, game Bleeding Kansas. It's an interesting history that isn't well understood by most people, and here it's taught as part of eighth grade history, which is probably for folks that are just too young to quite understand all of its nuances. It's particularly noteworthy today as we've entered a time of strong political partisanship and extremism. And the Bleeding Kansas era was a time when violence continued to begat more violence and an omen of the Civil War that was going to come. So hopefully let's learn from it and hope that it isn't indicative of where we stand today. Bleeding Kansas was a name for the period of violent civil confrontation that took place between abolitionist and pro-slavery forces in the Kansas Territory between 1854 and 1859. And while the records are incomplete, we know of 56 deaths and suspect that there were up to 200 casualties that were inflicted on both sides. Now, with the Kansas-Nebraska Act of 1854, Kansas was opened up for settlement, and with the repeal of the Missouri Compromise, it was up to the population of Kansas itself and not Congress to determine if the territory would enter the Union as a slave state or a free state. Now, this kicked off a land rush in which thousands of eastern abolitionists and southern pro-slavery settlers, particularly from Missouri, swarmed into the state to establish a land claim and cast ballots that would determine the state's future. At stake in all this was the determination of the future U.S. Senator who would represent Kansas in Washington, D.C. Uh, at that time, the Senate was deadlocked in a pretty acerbic war over slavery, and there were about an equal number of senators on both sides. Pro-slavery Missouri ruffians moved back and forth across the Missouri-Kansas border and were intimidating anti-slavery settlers in far eastern Kansas. At the same time, abolitionists like Henry Ward Beecher were shipping contraband Sharps rifles to anti-slavery settlers, and he was doing this in crates marked as Bibles. Now, the state that the settlers were hastily rushing into had only been very quickly surveyed, and land disputes combined with hard-headed political ideologies, liquor and guns, were creating a tender pile that needed only a small spark to set it off. And remember that a lot of these uh, fights took place over land just as much as they did over slavery. After a largely fraudulent election for legislators in early 1855, um, a group of free state delegates got together in that fall and met in Topeka, and they framed a state constitution that blocked slavery in the state. It was here in 1855 that an anti-slavery group met and drafted an anti-slavery constitution. This building also served as the Kansas capital until 1869. Meanwhile, here in Lecompton, pro-slavery forces were setting up a constitution. Fall, a group of pro-slavery forces met in Lecompton, Kansas, and drafted a pro-slavery constitution, which was endorsed by President James Buchanan at the time. Kansas now had two constitutions, two capitals, and two de facto governments. Also in 1855, a pivotal figure moved to Kansas, and that was this man, John Brown. He brought five of his sons and lived in a small cabin with his half-sister and her husband in the small town of Osawatomie. Brown arrived in a wagon loaded with weapons and ammunition, while in Kansas, he rallied anti-slavery forces, becoming their de facto leader, and also inspiring arena rock bands over a century later. Violence was quickly touched off in Lawrence when an anti-slavery landholder killed a pro-slavery neighbor that he'd been feuding with for some time. This was followed in May of the following spring when anti-slavery forces sacked Lawrence, burning down the Free State Hotel, destroying two newspaper offices, and plundering a number of homes. In a symbolic act, they captured a cannon dubbed Old Sacramento that went back and forth between the opposing forces during this period. It's also interesting to note that the only fatality in the sacking of Lawrence was one guy who had a brick fall on his head. Three days after Lawrence was sacked, John Brown and his sons struck. May 24th, 1856, John Brown and three of his sons show up here at the cabin of Alan Wilkinson, the Alan Wilkinson was a uh, pro-slavery leader in this area. They drag Wilkinson out and they hack him to death with broadswords. It was a pretty blatant act of terrorism. Later that night, they then moved on to another house and attacked another person and killed them. 
A month after this, pro-slavery forces under Henry Clay Pate captured two of Brown's sons, and on June 2nd, Brown attacked Pate's camp near the town of Baldwin at what would later be known as the Battle of Blackjack. So we're here at the Battle of Blackjack. Uh, this is about where Henry Clay Pate would have been camped. Now, behind me, you can see a small creek, and uh, just on the other side of that, uh, John Brown's troops would be assembling and firing on Pate. Pate thought that they could hold this position for a while. However, with the shooting going on and them running low on ammunition, they began to shift to the west over here. And Brown would be in one ravine and Pate would be in the other and they were firing on each other. So the area I'm standing in is only about 30 meters wide. And what was happening was Pate was in a gully over here. Brown's in a gully over here. And they're both firing rapidly at each other across this way. Now eventually, Pate's men would run out of ammunition, and they decided to uh, put a handkerchief on the end of a musket or a bayonet and march across and surrender to Brown. Brown, uh, after some reluctance, took their surrender and brought them to federal authorities the next day who released Pate and his men. Also, the other advantage that Brown had was he got his son, who Pate had uh, kidnapped back. Let's take a look at the gully over here. While we're here, let's take a look at this gully. So, there it is. There's where John Brown and his men would have been fighting from. And Pate, right over here. On August 30th, pro-slavery settler John W. Reed led a band of Missouri border ruffians on an attack of a cabin that Brown was staying at near Osawatomie. So, okay, this is the site where John Reed set up his cannon for the Battle of Osawatomie against uh, John Brown. John Brown's forces were back over here in the uh, lowlands around the river, and John Reed set up a cannon here and started firing down on them. Now, amazingly, out of all this, there was only four casualties, and uh, Brown's ret forces retreated across the river hoping to uh, pull Reed's forces away. However, Reed gave up on these guys and decided to go into the city of Osawatomie and uh, burn it down. Now, Brown's son, Frederick, was killed that day, along with five other anti-slavery casualties, and this became known as the Battle of Osawatomie. After this, the territorial governor, John Geary, was able to assert some control over the situation, and with the departure of Brown shortly thereafter, it became somewhat more peaceful. It, what followed was a two-year period of relative peace until May of 1858. At that time, 30 pro-slavery men again crossed the Missouri border, and they participated in one of the most barbaric acts of the Bleeding Kansas era. So I was here in Meredithine, Kansas in 1858, towards the end of the Bleeding Kansas era, that a number of pro-slavery forces descended on the little town of Trading Post that's just up the way a bit, and uh, they brought a number of folks out here to this little uh, ravine behind me and shot them and executed them. And in the end, five guys were shot, or five guys were killed, on January 29, 1861, Kansas became a free state. And while the confrontations in Kansas were over, it was a prelude to the massive bloodletting that would occur starting in April of 1861 at Fort Sumner. Bleeding Kansas was uh, designed by John Paniski in uh, 2019, I think. Yeah. And it was put out by Decision Games. It's a two-player game simulating the clash between the pro and anti-slavery forces in 1850s Kansas. And in game turn, this is represented by a number of colored wooden cubes. Now, the butternut cubes represent pro-slavery forces, and we also call those pro-forces or border ruffians. The blue cubes represent anti-slavery forces, which are also known as anti-forces, abolitionists, or jayhawkers. The white cubes represent migrants moving into and through the Kansas Territory. And these cubes have not taken sides in the com but may be converted by either player using the influence card symbol. The black cube, which is oversized, represents the federal troops stationed at Fort Leavenworth, and they played a key role in keeping the peace in the Kansas Territory. So note that skirmish, burn, and influence uh, may not be performed in a county occupied by the black federal troop cube, and that'll make more sense when I go through the rules. Now, also note that each faction can have a t total maximum of five cubes in any given county. Okay, so for setup, 
Take the uh, white cubes and place one in every Missouri county, that's M1 through M6, and one in all Kansas counties possessing a circled number in the upper left corner. You then place eight butternut pro-faction cubes, one in every county possessing a butternut square in the upper left corner of the county, and then place eight blue anti-faction cubes in every county possessing a blue square in the upper left corner of the county. You put the federal troops uh, in Leavenworth, and you place the victory point marker on the one of the VP track. Uh, set the burn markers off to a side, and then give each side their faction politics and violence markers. Then shuffle the card deck, deal two cards to each player, and place the deck at the side of the map. And finally, roll the dice to see who gets to go first. And whoever gets high goes first, and just re-roll any ties. Real quick on a turn sequence before I go into specifics. We start with rolling to see who goes first, and then the active player draws one card. The active player then declares the symbol on the top of the card to be used, uh, or if they want to just discard the card with no action, which can be done. And if the card has a player's faction star on it, they can play each symbol once, either one first, or um, one symbol twice, or they can do a special two symbol action. Again, I'll talk about that in a little more detail. They then take the actions based on the symbol choice in that in any order that they wish, and then they place political violence and or burn tokens as indicated by the specific action. If the card has an opposing faction star, the opposing player takes an action using either symbol. And if a marker is placed on an election space, you proceed to the election. Instead of playing one card and proceeding through steps A through F, you can also turn up all three cards and show a coordination bonus, and this gives you a victory point and lets you draw two new cards. The opponent becomes the active player and the steps repeat themselves. And whenever the deck runs out, just reshuffle it and continue the game. The game ends after the 1859 election count is completed and the player with the most victory points wins. So that's just a real basic overview of how a turn plays out. Let's go into some details and maybe that'll make a lot more sense. Players share a 53 card deck consisting of 52 historic personality invent cards and one insurrection joker. Now each card, other than the joker, displays in the upper left corner of the card two of the seven symbols used in the game. There's a skirmish symbol, burn symbol, and politics, migration, movement, cooperation, and influence. A third symbol called the faction star, which makes an action more powerful for the specific faction, may also appear in the upper right corner along with a blue or brown frame. Players choose and use these symbols to take actions and affect the course of the game. This is the whole basis for pretty much the entire game. Now the faction star specifically, when you play a card displaying your own faction symbol, you get to kind of flex your muscles and play both displayed symbols or choose one of the displayed symbols at the top of the card and use it twice. Now when playing a card that displays your opponent's faction symbol, you can play only one of these symbols of your choice, and then your opponent gets a free action from the same card after you take your action. So let's go through the specific action symbols. The first one is Skirmish, and here's what the Skirmish symbol looks like. When you play a Skirmish symbol, which is across swords, you're ordering an armed conflict in a county containing faction cubes from both sides. And you're doing this in order to disband or displace your opponent's forces. And essentially in a skirmish, both players will roll a die and then they'll modify it. And they do, to modify it, each faction cube in the county adds one faction point. A faction has to have cubes in the county. Towns don't skirmish by themselves. And also migrant cubes aren't added. Then each faction town, and those are either butternut or blue colored, adds a faction point for that faction. And each capital adds two points. Towns are not damaged in a scrimmage. They can only be damaged through the play of a burn symbol. And non-faction capitals, towns, and forts don't count. You add those to a d6 roll. In other words, they're modifiers. And basically the side having the greater results wins. If it's a tie, nothing happens on the map. Now, if the winning side wins the die roll by one or two, and that's modified, the losing side's cubes that survive the engagement are moved into an adjacent county. And the way this works is the winning side moves one of the losing side's cubes, and then the losing side moves a cube, and you alternate that until all the cubes have been moved out of the county where the skirmish occurred. Cubes moved into an adjacent county that already have the maximum of five cubes of that faction have to move into a second county that's within the cube limit. 
If the winning side wins the modified die roll by three or more, however, the winning side removes rather than retreats the very first cube. They can, in other words, they take out a cube, and that's cubes returned off map. The rest of the losing force is retreated as above. The second cube would be retreated by the losing side, etc. When a scrimmage ends, regardless of the outcome, the active player places one of the violence markers on the election track. Now, if you play a uh, skirmish with a faction star on the card, which matches your faction color, you can conduct two skirmishes, or you can conduct one skirmish with an extra plus two modifier. Burn symbol is a little flames, and when you play it, you ha have to have faction cubes in a county again, and it has to contain a target city of the opposite side. You can then place a burn marker on the targeted faction, town, or capital, and the burn marker then negates a faction point in that uh, town or capital. In other words, a town would be entirely negated, and uh, the capital would then have a modifier of plus one in any further uh, events that it would modify. Now, burn markers can be removed by a cooperation action, and, which is a little handshake. Now, note that a capital can only have one burn marker placed on it. And since a capital is worth two faction points, a damaged capital still counts as a faction point. Now, if you have the faction star and place a burn marker, you can place burn markers in two different counties, or a single burn marker can be placed in a county adjacent to a county with, where you have a faction cube. Once you've placed a burn marker, then you place a violence marker on the current election track. And if you place two burn markers, then you would place two violence markers on the election track. Okay, migration has a little covered wagon. What migration does is moves all of your migrant white cubes one county west. Uh, and the player that plays the card can choose which counties those go to. And to do this, you start at the highest number county. You move any migrant cubes one county to the west. Now, if there's a map edge on the western edge of the county, cubes may exit the map at the player's discretion. And counties are limited to five white cubes. And if all counties have five cubes, then excess are removed. Now, movement can be directly west, northwest, southwest, or diagonal. Once all migrant cubes have been moved, you add one new migrant cube to each of the Missouri counties on the uh, eastern side of the board. Now, if you play a migration symbol with a faction star, you move each migrant cube one or two adjacent counties, and then you add one new migrant cube to each of the Missouri counties, and you place two additional migrants anywhere on the map that you choose. There's also a migration after elections. So basically what you're doing is using migration to put uh, cubes into the counties that would be beneficial to you. The politics symbol, which looks like a little uh, capital symbol, can be used to place a political marker on the uh, election track. Now, if you have a faction star for this one, you can place two political symbols, or you can also use this to remove two opposing political markers from the current election track. And when playing a movement symbol, you move any or all of your faction cubes in one Missouri or Kansas county to one or more adjacent counties. Now, diagonal moves are allowed, and the cubes need not be moved to the same destinations. Players may not exceed five faction cubes in a destination county, however. Now, if you play this with a faction star, you can conduct two movement actions, or you can conduct a rally move. And... That means you can designate a county and move up to five of your faction cubes from adjacent counties into that one designated county. So you can move them all around from surrounding counties into that single central county. Okay, influence is a little fist. And when you play the influence symbol, you're attempting to sway the migrants to your way of thinking. And this is the only way to attain additional faction cubes. Now, you do not need to have a faction cube present in the county when you attempt an influence. But you must have at least faction points there. So a town or capital would count in this case to uh, attempt to an influence roll. Now for each influence symbol used, you roll a die and on a modified roll of five or six, you exchange a migrant cube in that county for one of your faction cubes. You can add plus one to the result for every faction point available in that county. So for instance, plus one for each faction cube, plus one for a faction town, and plus two for your faction capital. If the presence of opposing faction points in this case do not count against your influence action. And also note that if there are federal troops stationed in that county, you cannot uh, perform an influence action. Now, if you play the uh, faction star on this one, you, you essentially play two influence symbols, and you can choose to attempt two influence actions, or you can place an act faction cube in a Missouri county. Okay, the cooperation, the last one here. And it's a little handshake. And when playing a cooperation symbol, you have three options. 
You can move an opponent's faction cube out of a county where you have a faction cube, or you can remove a burn marker from a county where you have at least one faction point. You can finally move the federal troop cube to any county. That, and again, remember, no skirmish, burn, or influence actions can take place in a county where federal troops are there. Now, if you were to use the uh, faction star and play the two cooperation symbols, you can do any of the above twice, or a burn marker can be removed from a county adjacent to a county with a faction point. So you don't have to be in that county to remove the burn marker. Now the Insurrection Joker is a single card in the deck, and when you play it, you can choose any one symbol action. Now the Joker cannot be used to form a coordination bonus. And what a coordination bonus is, just a little extra point that you can get. And what you have to do is have six of the seven card symbols on your three cards. And when you see those six of the seven card symbols, and you can discard all three cards and draw two cards from the deck and give yourself a victory point. If you want to play a card that has no playable actions, you can do so, and you just indicate that, that you're not going to take any action from that. Now, if it has an opposing opponent's faction star on it, then that opponent can still has the option to play that action. Throughout the game, you're uh, working to control counties, and the player who has more faction points than his opponent controls that county. And each county is worth one point in an overall county election. A faction town acts as a permanent faction point, while a faction capital provides two permanent faction points. So each time an election occurs, you have to do an election count by county. So if neither player has faction points in a county, or players have equal faction points, then you go to a tiebreaker, and you basically count up the number of adjacent controlled counties, and whoever, whoever has the most adjacent controlled counties then wins the particular county that's being contested. Remember that counties that are diagonal don't count for tiebreakers. And if they're still equal, then the county is basically neutral. If a county has no faction points in it and there's no influence from surrounding counties, then it doesn't count. Now, after county control has been determined, the player compares the number of counties they control, and the player with the higher number of counties in their control subtracts the number that their opponent uh, has in their control, and the difference is the victory points that they get. Well, there's an election track here, and each time a player uses a scrimmage, a burn, or a political card symbol, then they place a marker on it. When a player's political or violence marker uh, reaches the election space, then the election is triggered. So the person with the most markers on the election track since the last election or the beginning of the game earns two bonus victory points, and that's recorded on the victory point track. Now, in the first Kansas election of 1854, voter fraud was rampant, and the results were avoided. For purposes of the game, no counties are counted, and only election track bonus is scored. After performing a election, then you do a post-election migration, and the player that uh, has lost the election can then move the migrants uh, as if they had a migrant card. After the election is completed, the player behind in overall victory points, or the pro player, if the victory points are tied, makes one migration action. And this does not count as a card play. So how do you win this game? Well, the player with the most accumulated points at the end of the fourth election wins the game. That's kind of an overview of the rules. Let's go through a playthrough, and I think it'll kind of make a little more sense then. We've got Bleeding Kansas here, and we've got it set up. Uh, I've put some uh, burn markers, uh, some extra cubes, all of my politics markers over here, so they're easy to get to. Now, if you're going to play along in Vassal, I'll let you get this loaded up. Let's all go to the lobby. Let and now we're ready to start. So first of all, we need to determine who gets to go first. I'm going to say the Free Staters or the uh, anti-slavery folks will roll. I need to give them a little space to put a roll in. I get a one, and then the pro-slavery Missouri Ruffians will go and they get a three, so it's going to be up to the uh, pro-slavery forces to start first. And I'm going to draw their three cards. Okay, this is a great card. This Fre President Franklin Pierce card is a great one to have because I can do two influences. And I'm going to go ahead and try to influence in uh, Douglas County. So I get a plus one and a plus two for having LeCompton. And I get a two, four. Not enough to uh, convert this guy. I'm going to go ahead and then try to uh, convert uh, Cass County here. I get a plus one. Actually, Wyandotte. Let's go up to Wyandotte because I get a plus two, plus three. I roll and I get a six. So we can change this cube up. 
I guess I need to talk a little bit about what strategy I'm going to try to use here. Um, I think what I'm going to do is the, uh, in this turn up to the 1854 election, I'm going to try to get the uh, anti-slavery folks to kind of have the uh, Caw River, Kansas River corridor here. So try to get Johnson, these, basically these counties along the corridor, and then I can move out from there. At the same time, I think that the Missouri ruffians will try to uh, get these cubes over on the left side and control the Missouri County so that they can control cubes that are coming through on the migration. So let's try that up until the 1854 election and see what happens. Okay, it's up to the uh, drawing three cards for the anti-slavery folks. The moves are kind of nice, but we're going to go ahead and use two political markers. Or no, one, because this is not a starred card. So they get a political marker. And we will put that right there for the anti-slavery folks. Okay, we go with the pro-slavery folks. And I'm going to say they're going to burn Lawrence. Play the discard pile. And burning's pretty easy. You just put a burn marker on Lawrence, and we take a violence marker for the pro-slavery folks. Okay, go with the anti-slavery folks. Um, what can I do here? Co-op? I'm going to co-op it. No, I'm going to... Hmm, I've got some pretty good cards here, but I'm going to save the movement card. We're going to play this. And we are going to use it to fight in Douglas County. And we're going to try to... I'm going to co-op it. I'm going to... No, I'm going to fight. No, we're going to fight here. So they get a... It's a plus one for both sides. So the pro-slavery folks get a five plus one is six. The anti-slavery folks get a three plus one is four. It's not enough to uh, destroy that cube, that, but we can move it out of the county. I'm going to move him out to Osage County. Actually, no, I'm going to move him to, to Shawnee County. And then we can try to fight him in Shawnee County, maybe defeat him there. Okay, and uh, that's a violence for the uh, anti-slavery folks. We go with the uh, pro-slavery guys. We've got some moves and some fighting. Uh, I really want influence markers, so... <laughs> we could migrate some guys. Or we can fight. Okay, let's just play migration. So I'll show you how to do a migration here. We'll move this guy and this guy and this guy and this. You try to get them into counties that you have some control over. He can go down here and here. Douglas can go here, here. Having the move uh, thing on here is great, where it shows the track, because I can tell what I've moved. And then we move these guys in. OK, everybody's moved. We then place And this is going to be a long video today, so I get a little carried away on the first part, but enjoyed myself. Had a good time. Eric helped me out filming all that, so I hope you guys kind of thought it was sort of interesting. Okay, uh, let's go with the uh, anti-slavery guys. Um, hmm, they've got an influence and they've got a politics. I'm going to say they're going to keep trying to politic here. Yeah, let's go with influence. Um, we're going to try to influence in Shawnee County. So I get a plus two and a plus three. And we roll and we get a six. Okay. So this guy is removed and we put a anti-slavery token there. The pro-slavery guys go and 
are going to attempt to, we're going to use the cooperation. And a cooperation lets us throw a guy out to Jackson County there. So he throws the pro-slavery guys north. That was actually used to be Calhoun County, named after John C. Calhoun. It's kind of ironic that it was named after his political enemy, Andrew Jackson. Okay, the pro-slavery guys go. And we will play that, uh, the cooperation. And we're going to send this guy to Wabunsee County. Sorry, you folks out in Wabunsee County, but you don't count for much in this game. Okay. Anti-slavery guys go. And, um, or no, this is the pro-slavery guys. Sorry. Hmm. Okay, we are going to play this to discard. And since it's a, it's a star, but it's a pro, it's an anti-slavery star. We're going to use the uh, influence, and then that's going to be up to the uh, anti-slavery guys to get a move in. So I'm going to try to influence here in uh, Wyandotte County. So I get a plus two, plus three, plus four for having the capital there. So I get a plus four, and we change this guy up. Okay. Do pro-slavery forces want to move anywhere? I don't think so. They really don't have a lot of guys to move. So that's a good card for the uh, pro-slavery guys to, to play. If the anti-slavery guys couldn't move, so that's what I was talking about. I will get that confused some during this. Anti-player goes. Um, let's try to uh, do another influence. And we are going to try to influence this guy in Shawnee County again. So one, two, plus three. It's a two plus three. That's enough. That's a five. So we can take a cube and, uh, okay, the pro-slavery guys go. Um, I can fight or I can use that or I can move. Let's move this guy from Wabunsee County. This is a good card to move it, and we'll move him here, and then the anti-slavery guys go. We could fight, or we can move, or we can co-op. Let's co-op it, and we co-op it, and again, we send him back to Wabunsee County. Okay, pro-slavery guys go. And let's do an influence. We like those influence cards we need to use. Okay, so Wyandotte County again. Now we've got a one, two, three, four, five. Which should be automatic, which it is. And we get to get that guy there. So we're building up some forces in uh, Wyandotte County, North Kansas City. Okay, anti-slavery guys go. Um, I'm going to play this card here, even though it has a star from the other side. And we are going to burn LeCompton. So LeCompton burns. We get another violence marker. Okay. Anti-slavery, or pro-slavery guys go. And another influence. Oh, it's, let's see. Let's do some move here. We want to move two of these guys to Johnson County. Okay. Anti-slavery goes. Um, let's play this for a politics marker. Okay, pro-slavery guy goes. And I was looking for a move. You're always looking for the, you always get the wrong ones. Let's go ahead and play an influence marker. And we're going to try to influence down here in Lynn County. Yes, we have a plus two. Four, five, six. That's enough. Okay. Antis. Man, we can move a lot. Let's go ahead and uh, 
play the discard. Um, Anti-slavery forks are going to go on Lycans County here. Now let's try Lawrence. So Lawrence says we've got a plus one to influence, and we get a two, so it didn't count. Okay. Pro-slavery guys go. I'm going to use the move. So we use the move, and um, he can move diagonally. So he's going to move here. And that puts him in Cass County. Now, since it's a blue star, that means that the uh, anti-slavery folks get a uh, bonus, which they get a bonus politics marker. So they'll set this over here. And it's now the anti-slavery guys move the Buchanan card. Okay. What do we want to do? We still want to influence as much as possible here. We need to get some guys... I'm going to try a migration would be helpful too, um, but not quite there yet. Um, okay, we're going to move two, and since it's a star, I'm going to take a move and a migration. So we're going to move here. Uh, these guys migrate off. And move this guy here. We'll move this guy here. We want to move them to fairly advantageous counties if we can. But the, the rule is they have to move west. So. Lots of moving. We do not want to move him into Wyandotte County. That would be an easy one to change out. Okay, and then we build up our Missouri group here. And take those off. Okay, I think we've got all those guys. So now the pro-slavery guys will go. And... Where do I want to do? I want to move if I can, but we're co-op. We're influence. Let's use our influence. There we go. So Cass County, we're going to try to influence in Cass County, Missouri. You can perform all these actions in Missouri, but uh, three plus four is five. But Missouri counties don't count for um, any victory points. Okay. Uh, the let's use an influence and we are going to try to influence in Shawnee County so we're going to go uh, one two plus three against a cube three plus three is six so that's enough we get a blue cube okay then the pro-slavery guys are going to go Let's see, I've got one, two, three, four, five victory points here. If they get six, they would have control. Let's go ahead and play this. Throw a couple of uh, politics cards in there. Maybe we can make some headway there. Okay, anti-slavery guys go. Anything to burn. I like to burn something. So, yes, we do. We can burn Paris. Let Paris is burning. So we have a burn marker in Paris in Lynn County and we also get the advantage of having a violence thing. So that'll put us I think over the here on the election track. It'll put us ahead. Okay. Anti-slavery or pro-slavery guys get to go. And anything to burn? Yeah, let's tit for tat. Let's uh do a quid pro quo burn of Mound City. Put a violence marker over here. And so Mound City gets a burn. And that, uh, we've got one more to go. Let's uh, 
co-op put out a burn. Hmm. We could fight or migrate, or we can move or burn. Okay, we're going to play this one. And since we get two... Um, I'm going to burn. Oh, wait. So we've got the burn with the star. This is going to be a sick burn because I can use this in a neighboring county. So we are going to clone that. We're going to burn Fairway. Now, I think Fairway is actually in Johnson County. It's not in Wyandotte County. It's part of the Kansas City. Well, it's part of the Kansas City area. So there's our burn. And we, we use the star part. And then we got our violence marker here. Okay. That ends the first quote-unquote turn, the first year. It's the 1854 election. Now, I'm going to show you... The 1854 election was considered generally a fraudulent election. There was a lot more votes than were even people in the area. And so... But I'm going to show... So in the game, you don't go through and do the county elections. But I'm going to go ahead and show you the county elections just so you kind of know here. Okay, now we're going to go through counties to uh, determine victory points for the round, for the election. And again, like I said, this is the 1855, so we won't really count this one, but I'll just show you how to do it. It really helps to write down a list of counties and then figure them out that way. So let's start with the highest number county. And again, you're going to count the counties with a little circle around the number. And so we'll start up here with Riley County in the far northwest. And it has a brown one, so it goes to the pro-slavery forces. And also Pottawatomie County next door is going to go to the anti-slavery forces. Uh, we go down to Davis County, which is now Geary County. It's neutral. However, it's bordered by Riley and Wabunsee that are both uh, pro-slavery. So it's going to go uh, pro-slavery also. Uh, then moving more quickly, Shawnee County is going to be anti-slavery. Down to Osage is anti. Down to Coffee is, is going to be anti because more surrounding counties let's see one surrounding county is anti-slavery okay back up to atchison county is pro jefferson doesn't have any units in it but if we count the surrounding counties it goes anti douglas is going to go anti franklin down here in ottawa is going to go anti anderson is pro because we got two units here they've got lynn county and again, we don't cross, we don't count diagonal counties. Uh, Leavenworth is a tie because there's nobody in here, but if we count surrounding counties, it comes out to be three and three. So basically Leavenworth County is not going to count. Oh, wait a minute. Hold on. Leavenworth County will count because it has Leavenworth in it. And Leavenworth is uh, pro-slavery. Okay. Wyandotte County is obviously going to be pro-slavery. Johnson is pro uh, Lycans County is anti, Lynn is pro, and down here in Bourbon County is going to be pro because of the surrounding counties. So it comes out to be nine counties pro-slavery and uh, eight counties anti-slavery. So the pro-slavery forces are going to get a victory point. And then um, we count down here for the election track. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven to one, two, three, four. So that would go to the anti-slavery forces. How, so they get two points for that. Now, I said this has one victory point for the pro-slavery forces for having the county advantage, but I forgot that this election doesn't count. So they're at zero. Okay, we're ready to go to turn two. For turn two, I think I will continue to try to uh, have the anti-slavery forces convert some folks and maybe move down into some of these uh, central East, eastern central Kansas counties like Franklin, Coffee, Anderson. And at the same time, I think I'm going to have the pro-slavery forces continue to try to take over Missouri and then start uh, migrating cubes west. Okay. We need to see who gets initiative for the turn, and we'll start with the anti-slavery forces, or blue. They roll a one, the pro-slavery forces roll a two. So it's in the pro-slavery forces camp. 
uh, the overall roll and they pull up. Let's see what we got here. Yeah, let's see. We could try to fight here. Let's try to fight. Play discard. And we're going to try to fight down here in Lynn County. So we have a plus two for the pro-slavery forces and a plus one for the anti. So pro goes first and they get a two. Plus two is four. Anti get a six. So the anti ended up getting two. So they move out these uh, pro-slavery guys. Where are we going to move them? I'm going to move them. Hmm. I'll move one up here. And I'll move them both up here. To, you know, they really don't do me much good in Lincoln's camp. Actually, they do. Um, okay, wait. The first one, uh, this one here, is moved by the uh, anti-slavery forces. Pro-slavery forces are going to go ahead and move into Anderson County, and they can control it that way. So that's not a bad thing. Okay. Anti-slavery forces are going to go. Oh, and we also forgot our uh, violence marker. Uh, that was a pro-slavery violence marker. Okay. What can we do? What can we do? Um, we need a conversion of some sort, but we don't have it. We can fight, or we can take... Let's go ahead and play this discard. And we're going to take the politics. Now, since it's a star on our side, we get two politics markers. So we move those into place. And then we go to the pro-slavery forces. Um, this is nice. We This is going to help us. Okay, play this discard. And this is going to be two conversions. And we are going to try to convert in Bates County in... Uh, we'll try that first, and then if that doesn't work, we'll try... If it works, we'll try Vernon uh, County here in Missouri. Actually, let's go with Anderson and Bates. Let's try that. So we're going to try, first of all, in Bates County, and we get a plus one. A one plus one isn't going to do it, so then we're going to try in Anderson County, and we get a three, four. That's not enough to do a conversion either. So, okay, wasted, wasted effort. Okay, back to the uh, anti-slavery forces. Um, we need a move or a conversion. Hmm, what can we do? I'm going to try... Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to play this discard, and we are going to use that uh, cooperation to put out the fire in Lawrence. So we will put that fire out, and... Since that was, uh, make sure I get this right. Yeah, that was the anti-slavery forces. So somebody can burn something somewhere. Oh, okay, yeah. In Lycans County, we'll burn Os Osiowatomy. Boy, they spelled that really wrong. Um, let's see. Osiowatomy burns by uh, pro-slavery forces. And... Then we get a burn marker, and we have a violence marker for the pro-slavery forces. A couple of notes here. I Really, Ottawa, they needed to get a spell checker. Ottawa spelled kind of off. Now, Osiwatomy on the cards and on the uh, map, they spell two different ways, and both of them are, are wrong. It's actually a combination of the word Osage and Potawatomy. So they that was kind of a problem. Also, the Kansas River at that time is the Kaw River. It didn't become the car or Kansas until what the 80s I don't know I was a KU at the time and but they did okay with Davis County and Lycans County now they kind of muffed some of the other counties which before the war had some different names but all in all it's those are just nitpicks okay let's see where we go okay we were at the pro-slavery forces Ugh, they keep getting those blue stars um we're going to take a move, play the discard, and move to Bates County. I want two guys down here in Bates County. Okay. Blue goes, and blue is going to take a, take a political marker, and 
Then brown goes. There's John Brown, but he was on blue, not brown. Brown's going to do a co-op. I'm going to do the co-op here. And with my co-op, I'm going to throw this guy back up here to, oops, I'm going to throw this guy to Lawrence. Throw him out of uh, Lycans County. Okay. Blue goes. Um, let's see here. We can move, convert. What do we want to do? Put out a fire? Let's see. Wait, I know what we'll do. We'll convert. And it's a brown star, but that's okay. We're going to convert into Pika. So one, two, three, four, five. Easy conversion. And there we go. Brown goes. Oh, the insurrection joker. Let's save that. Um, oh, and we got to move. I'm sorry, we forgot that move down here. So Brown got a move since it was their star, and they are going to move. Hmm. I'm going to move on into Vernon. Yeah. Where do I want to move? I'm going to move to, to Johnson County. Try to do some conversions there. Okay. Blue goes. Oh, they keep getting those brown stars. Um, is there anything I can burn? The burn marker is kind of the most problematic. There's anywhere to battle? I'll take the politics. Another brown star, so it's a co-op. Going to use my co-op to move the federal troops to Shawnee County. So no more conversions there. Kind of too late, but that's okay. Okay. Brown goes. And uh, we have the insurrection joker. Um, going to play the insurrection joker, and I am going to try to do a conversion in Bates County. I get a four, five, six, so that's enough. Oops. And then blue goes, draws a card. A conversion or a move. We want to make some... I'm going to use a move. And we're going to move these two down here to do a conversion. And then brown goes. We are going to play the... Uh, Hmm, don't want to use that quite yet. Oh gosh, all three stars. Hold on a second. We can play this as a coordination bonus. Look at this. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Yep, we're going to do that. And that keeps the blue from being used. So we get a victory point for that. And we discard our cards. Play to discard, play to discard, play to discard. It's hard to remember to uh, remember that coordination bonus. Oh, that gives us a much better hand. Okay, blue goes. Um, I don't want to migrate. I don't want to battle. I guess we'll do this. We'll play this one and we'll take the two politics markers. One, two. Okay, brown goes. Uh, look at that hand. Um. I'm going to try a conversion. I'm going to play the discard here. And I'm going to take a move and move these guys down to Vernon County, Missouri. Do you say Missouri or Missouri? I alternate. So, okay, blue goes. Um, migration isn't going to help us much there and there. To get that guy out of Anderson County. I'm going to do that. I'm going to use the, my uh, migration here. Remove this guy off the board. Uh, this guy has to go here. This guy goes here. These two go here. Um, Copy County. These guys aren't going to change. They Everybody just moves 
over one, but we got that guy out of Anderson County, which is good. That helps us. Oh, we can move that. There's a good, yeah, that's not bad. We move this guy out, this guy here, this guy here, right here, here, here. Is that everybody moved? Yeah. Okay, that migration helped us a little bit, particularly in Osage County, and it got the guy out of Anderson County. So, okay, Brown goes. Brown is going to try, I'm going to play this one, and I'm going to convert two units. I'm going to try and cast. I get a three plus two is a five, so that's enough. And then down in Vernon County, I got a five easy conversion. Okay, blue goes. Um, we don't have a conversion. Play the Wakarusa War, and we're going to move this guy back to Leavenworth. We're sending him back to Leavenworth. Now the uh, pro-slavery forces could battle. Um, I don't think there's any counties that have it, so that's a good card to play. Okay, then the brown goes. Um, We need a move. And we are going to play this move here. And I'm going to move one, two. So two guys here. And then actually, I'm going to use this as a move and a conversion. And I'm going to try to convert up here in Johnson County. Six plus two is enough. Okay, that yeah, that worked out better. I don't know how the Meridocene massacre ended up way up here in Johnson County. Doesn't that's not quite the right place, but okay. And I wonder if they mean when they say the Battle of Middle Creek, they mean oh no, they do mean the Battle of Middle Creek. The Battle of Mine Creek is down there. So okay, blue goes. I got a blue star. It's a move and a fight. Um, I need a conversion, though. Okay, we're going to play Stephen Douglas and take a point. Okay. Brown goes. Um, there's our conversion. What can we convert? We need a fight now. I'll take the point. Play to discard. Take the point. We get a politics point. Doesn't help us a lot, but that's okay. And then blue goes. We can co op, we can move, we can't convert. I'm going to play the co op. And with the co op, oh, I'm not going to play that. Oh, go, go back. Back to my hand. Um. Hmm. I am going to play the co-op. There we go. And I'm going to take off the burn on Mound City. Okay. Oh, no more cards. So we go down here, we send us to the draw pile, and reshuffle. Um, the no-nothings and the... Okay, that's, this isn't going to hurt us any. We're going to play our uh, migration. Get some uh, refreshed uh, units. I don't think I played the migration after the election last turn, so I did that wrong. Um, doesn't matter where this guy goes. Uh, this guy is going to have to go somewhere. Not good for me. And these guys are going to stay the same with a guy here. Put a guy in here because this guy's here. Cass County gets a guy. They get a guy. And we'll send this to Atchison. We'll refill this. This has to go to Jefferson. Okay, I think that's it. And um, that's going to end the turn because... Um, they use the migration since it was a blue star. Blue gets a politics marker. So now we are in the 1855 election.
Moving into the next turn, which is the 1857 year, going moving up to its election, I'm first of all going to figure out some points here, and we're going to look at the 1855 election. Now, I to save time, I went ahead and done all the figuring on this, and I came out that the pro-slavery forces controlled 10 counties, while the anti-slavery forces controlled 7 counties. So the pro-slavery forces are going to get uh, 10 minus 7, or 3 victory points. 1, 2, 3. Now the anti-slavery forces had um, advantage in the political election track, so they're going to get 2 points for that. So it's tied up 4 to 4. Moving on into the next round, I think what I'm going to continue to do is try to move down uh, with the anti-slavery forces into these uh, counties down here like Coffee, Anderson, and Franklin and going to continue to try to uh, put uh, get these uh, eastern counties converted by pro-slavery forces. I'm going to have to start getting these guys moving a little faster because if they want to end up with a, any sort of major victory. I think I'm going to go ahead, since you've seen a couple of rounds played, that I'm going to speed up the video and so we will go ahead and uh, do that at, at a sped up rate until the end of this round and then I'll be right back.
So now it's time for the 1858 election, and we'll begin by uh, comparing election points here, and the anti-slavery group gets one extra point, so they get two points for that. And then when I went through the counties, we, since we lost uh, Likens and Atchison County, it came out to be eight uh, counties were pro-slavery and nine were anti-slavery. So the anti-slavery folks get one more. And then we're going to move into the final round. Now, in this round, I think what we're going to have to do is, again, push to the east for the uh, pro-slavery forces. The anti-slavery forces are kind of up against a wall here. I think they're going to have a hard time keeping things going. They've got all the counties they can, but they don't have a lot of uh, units to support them. So it'll be interesting to see. The pro-slavery forces were able to convert enough units that they don't have anything left. And if you don't have anything left, you can't convert anymore. So again, I'm going to speed this up, and then we'll come back with the uh, final tally for the game.
That was an interesting ending for the game. It was a really fast turn, not only because there wasn't that many uh, political points to it, but also because both sides were trying to accumulate political points quickly. However, the uh, pro-slavery forces were able to uh, win the political points, and they get two victory points for that. And then we figure out counties, and figuring out Douglas County did change hands. And that gives us a uh, total election count of uh, nine counties pro and eight counties anti-slavery. So the pro-slavery forces get one victory point, which means the game ends up being a tie. So interesting uh, ending to it. Probably not quite as historical as what happened in real life, but certainly it could have happened that way. Again, I think this is a pretty good game. I really enjoyed playing it, and as you can tell, I've enjoyed doing a lot of the historical work on it, too. So I hope you like that kind of thing, and if you do, uh, let me know. Also, uh, let's see, next week I think I've got a old, more traditional game, uh, Old Avalon Hill Alexander, and I'll be playing it. So hope to see you then. Thanks again for watching.